In evolutionary astrology, the archetype of Uranus, Aquarius, and the eleventh house gets signified with mental trauma. It gets signified with trauma due to the fact that this archetype also represents what we would know as the individuated unconsciousness. In other words, what all of us as individuals hold below the surface in our own soul memories, far memories, past lives, whatever your languaging is. And so Uranus contains a lot of information for all of us. Very briefly, the three types of unconscious memories that exist with Uranus is what we would know as the far memory or the past lives of this and every lifetime we've lived here, there, and everywhere. It's where we go and access when we do our past life therapies or, hypno or hypnosis, etc. Uranus also contains everything that we cannot accept or deal with in the present circumstances. The domain of Saturn and the individuated consciousness. Saturn always works to stuff whatever it doesn't want to accept or see in its life. Or does it stuff it down to Uranus, down below the surface? We want to forget about it. We want to ignore it. We're not going to talk about it. We're going to pretend it's not there. Uranus also contains the blueprints of the future which is where we are going. And each of us, within our own soul, within our own brain, within our own mind, will receive these tidbits that pop up into consciousness in that Uranian fashion, which is bits and pieces of information that seem different or even radical than where we have structured our life in the current moment. And so when we find those blueprints of the future popping up at us, what we want to do is pay attention to the element of repetition. The more it comes up, driving your car, doing your dishes, as I like to say, the more it comes up, the more you better pay attention. And it doesn't matter how radical it is or how different it is from the present Saturnian moment. You need to move in that direction if it keeps coming up, because if you don't, then you get what you call those Uranian upsets that come back at you as shocks and traumas. We've all been there. We've all experienced that. Well, as we are working with Uranus, leaving Pisces and entering Aries, we're starting a brand new Uranian cycle. So it's full of endings and new beginnings in about every way you can imagine. Bless Jupiter. Okay, Jupiter, the ability to put our life together and understand it on a conscious level, our individualized belief systems, philosophies, how we look at life. Jupiter traveling right now over this last year with Uranus has been very helpful in making sense of all of these Uranian tidbits that have been coming up. I'm going to work through, oh, and that reminds me, there is a suitcase back there by the guy in the yellow shirt. I have, I have a one-page handout. Um, basically, it's a listing of the dates of all of the... Would you go... Yeah, um, it's in one of the front flaps of the black suitcase. And it's got um, the Uranus dates of all the different Uranus generations. I thought it might be helpful if, we would, if you had that for reference while we were looking through this. Because what we are going to do is we're going to go through these Uranian generations backwards through the zodiac. So we're going to start with someone like my niece, and we're going to end up with those of us who may be getting ready to experience our first Uranus return. But first of all, a little, few more tidbits on this, on this whole archetype of, of Uranus, and again, its signature or association with trauma and shock and things that bring the radical changes in our life. The element of Uranus Aquarius in the 11th house is to help us decondition from the past and to liberate ourselves into who we truly are, to be an unconditioned soul, free, to experience our life however we desire. And so, when we are conditioned, which many of us are, who of us are not, 
when we are conditioned through human consciousness over the last 2,000 years of the Piscean Age, the last five, 6,000 years, we carry layers upon layers upon <coughs> layers of conditioning via previous experiences. And if those previous experiences have been not so pleasant, they will affect the soul. They will arrest the soul in its liber liberation process. I have seven of the ten planetary archetypes in either Sag or the ninth house. Pronunciation of words is an experience for me. I know things. I don't know how to pronounce things. And I get here on the planet, or uh, on Hawaii. Uh, Aloha Huani is a real big step for me. So it, this, this whole um, area of previous experiences where it has not been pleasant and it's arrested our soul and its ability to evolve and liberate and become that area is trauma. And when we stuff it below the surface via Saturn, or it's there because of past lives, it has a tendency to operate unconsciously in triggering behaviors, triggering um, psychosis and neuroses and all of those happy little words that you hear about in your therapeutic fields. But if you then will look at where you have Uranus natally, by house and sign, that's going to be some of your biggest clues. You can also look to where you have Aquarius on a house cusp. You can look to planets in the 11th house. You can look to any aspects that interact with Uranus, Aquarius, 11th house planets, etc. All of that put together then starts to give you your own path for understanding where you carry this trauma within your soul. And so Uranus here, as it has been moving through Pisces over the last seven years, Pisces being the domain of Neptune in the 12th house, that barrier between what's unconscious and what wants to come up and be revealed has been thinning, 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 meaning all of us have found that these memories are coming up one way or another. Uranus in Pisces either through our dream world, Uranus in Pisces through any of our spiritual processes that we go through to open things up. But it's opening up for us whether we want to go there or not. And as we look at Neptune coming into Pisces over the next 14 years, get ready for even more. So I'm looking at this play between Uranus and Aries and Neptune and Pisces as just being, for the most part, a real opportune time to break free, to grow, to be who we want to be.